Hello students. Today I have a lecture. It's named Occupational Health and Industrial Hygiene. Industrial hygiene as a science of anticipating, recognizing, evaluating and controlling workplace conditions that may cause workers injury or illness. Ukrainian standard, standard gives the following definition. Occupational hygiene is a complex of measures and means on preservation of health of the workers, preventive maintenance of adverse influences of industrial environment and labor process. Subject of study of hygiene of work is labor processes and physiological reactions of an organism of workers, productions and adverse factors of industrial environment, a condition of health and morbidity of the workers. Objectives of the discipline are assessment of influence of working conditions on an organism, development and introduction of measures capable of ensuring the maximal productivity of work in absence of harmful influence of, on health working, improvement of working conditions, prevention of occupational diseases, development of the hygienic precipitations, standards, instructions and recommendations, assessment of efficiency of improving measures. The set of the factors of a physical, chemical, biological nature influencing the man together with socio-economic factors during his labor activity refers to the industrial environment. The major harmful physical factors of industrial environment include mechanical influences, increased dust pollution of working zone air, uncomfortable microclimate of industrial premises, increased level of infrared, ultraviolet radiation, increased level of vibration, noise, infra and ultrasound, increased or lowered barometric pressure, increased level of ionizing and or of electromagnetic radiation if in a working zone, increased intensity of electrical and or of a magnetic field, the elevated level of static electricity, dangerous level of voltage in electrical network, the elevated lowered ionization of air, conditions of visual work, influences of laser radiation. Among chemical production factors, it's necessary to distinguish substances with expressed specific toxic action in Ukraine we use index O, oxides of nitrogen, cyanic hydrogen, etc. Substances allergens, index A, acrylonitrile, beryllium, nickel. Substance cancerogens, index K, benzyl, beryllium, etc. Dispersed substances with mainly fibrogenic action, index F, dolomite, iron, silicon dioxide and minerals containing them. Substances potentially dangerous in Percutaneous exposure, index plus, bromine, benzyl. Pathogenic microorganisms like bacteria, viruses, rickettsia, spirochetes, fungi, protozoa, and products of their ability to live, having as a rule high sensibilization properly, property index A, and also a number of organic substances of natural and semi synthetic origin belong to group of harmful production factors of a biological nature. The special place in a number of harmful industrial factors is taken by psychophysiological features of labor process. The labor process is associated with physical, static and dynamic and psychological overloads, intellectual overloading, sensoric overloading, monotony of work, emotional overloads. 
It's obvious that irrespective of nature of the production factor, the part of them is inherent to extremely productive activity of men, other part represents preformed natural factors, and the intensity of influence in conditions of production has got new quality. The first group includes the artificial light exposure, vibration, exposure to artificial or synthesized chemical substances, products of microbiological synthesis. The second group includes infrared radiation from liquid metal, noise generated by the equipment, elevated and lowered barometric pressure, professional contact with activators of zooentrepreneurs and entrepreneurs disease, occupational hazards and exposures. Hundreds of millions of workers in both developed and developing countries are at risk from exposure to physical, chemical, biological, psychosocial or ergonomic hazards in the workplace. For many of these people, there is often the risk of combined exposures to different occupational hazards. Approximately 30% of the workforce in developed and between 50 and 70% in developing countries may be exposed to heavy physical workloads or ergonomically poor working conditions, which can lead to injuries and musculoskeletal disorders. Those most affected include miners, farmers, lumberjacks, fishermen and construction workers, warehouse workers and health care personnel. Physical hazards which can adversely affect health include noise, vibration, ionizing and non-ionizing radiation, heat and other unhealthy microclimatic conditions. Between 10 and 30 percent of the workforce in industrialized countries and up to 80 percent in developing and newly industrialized countries are exposed to a variety of these potential hazards. Exposure to hundreds of biological engines, viruses, bacteria, parasites, fungi and molds occurs in many occupational environments from agriculture to offices. The hepatitis B and C viruses, HIV, AIDs, infection and tuberculosis, particularly among healthcare workers, and chronic parasitic diseases, particularly among agricultural and forestry workers, are some of the most common occupational diseases resulting from such exposures. Thousands of toxic chemicals pose serious health threats potentially causing cancer, respiratory and skin diseases, as well as adverse effects on reproductive function. Workers can be and often are exposed to hazardous chemical agents such as solvents, pesticides and metal dust. Workers may also be exposed to various types of mineral and organic dusts. For example, silica, asbestos and coal dust cause irreversible lung diseases, including different types of pneumoconiosis. Known since the time of Hippocrates, silicosis is still the most widespread occupational lung disease. Silicosis can predispose workers to tuberculosis and lung cancer. It's progressive and incurable but preventable. Organic dust can cause a number of respiratory conditions such as bisinosis and allergic reactions such as asthma. The risk of cancer from workplace exposure is of particular concern. Around 350 chemical substances have been identified as occupational cancerogens. They include benzene, xevalent, chromium, asbestos and aflatoxins. 
In addition, the risk of cancer also exists from exposure to physical hazards such as ultraviolet and ionizing radiations. The most common occupational cancers include lung, bladder, skin and bone cancer, leukemia and sarcomas. In European Union, approximately 16 million people are potentially exposed to hazards at work, including cancerogenic agents. Exposure to thousands of allergenic agents, including vegetable dusts, is a growing cause of work-related illness. A large number of allergens have been catalogued which can cause skin and respiratory disease, like for example, like asthma. The number of these disorders registered in several industrialized countries is increasing steadily. Social conditions at work which raise serious concerns about stress include inequality and unfairness in the workplace management style based on the exclusion of workers from the decision-making process, lack of communication and poor organization of work, strained interpersonal relationships between managers and employers. Stress at work has been associated with elevated risks of cardiovascular diseases, particularly hypertension and mental disorders. In the least developed countries, occupational health problems are found essentially in agriculture and other types of primary production. Heavy physical work, often combined with heat stress, pesticide poisoning and organic dust, is frequently aggravated by non-occupational factors such as chronic parasitic and infectious diseases. Poor hygiene and sanitation, nutritional problems, poverty and illiteracy heighten to the risk of disease and or occupational injury. Practically in all spheres of labor activities a man has professional contact to that or other chemical substance. Industrial poisons, substances meeting during labor activity of the men as initial, intermediate or the final products of synthesis at infringement of the safety precautions regulations and hygiene of work can get in a worker's organism in quantities dangerous to their health. In modern conditions, industrial poisons meet practically in all industries and agriculture. So, at reception, both processing of polycondensated and polymeric plastic masses in air space of a working zone, the containing initial monomeasures, catalytic additives, products incomplete polymerization and term oxidative destruction, dust particle of powder polymers and ready products act with complex steam gas and steam aerosol complexes at their machining. The representatives of metals, wolfram, molybden, chromium, nickel, beryllium, etc. appear in metallurgy except for a long time well-known oxides of carbon and sulfur as industrial harms. In collieries, mines, open carriers where the production of minerals by an explosive way in air will be carried out, the oxides of nitrogen, carbon and high dispersed aerosol are allocated. In a metal cutting industry, the motor oils and antifreeze liquids containing in the structure aggressive substances. Nephton acid, LKs, are widely used. The significant quantity of industrial poisons is connected to technological process in a chemical industry, basic chemistry, coxo chemical manufacture, manufacturing of dyes, synthetic polymers and plastic weights. 
In an agriculture, in the large assortment and volumes are used pesticides and mineral fertilizers. In study of influence of harmful chemical substances on worker organism with the purpose of content safe and harmless working conditions on manufacturers, the section of hygiene of work named industrial toxicological toxicology is engaged. Its basic sections toxicometry and pathogenesis of intoxication. Toxicometric research pursues studies on pathogenesis of intoxication with their help establish parameters of toxicability and danger of substance. The clinic of a poisoning is described at unitary and repeated contact to the agent. The toxicodynamics, dynamics of infringement of separate functions of an organism is studied. The pathomorphology of the poisoning is described. Pathogenesis of intoxication, adjacent section of toxicology and pathological physiology studies toxicokinetics of poison, route of exposure, distribution, metabolism and deducing. Also, the conducting mechanisms of a toxic action are established. Biochemical, biophysical, pathophysiological, immunological, etc. Industrial toxicology has a, the goal to warn, to distinguish and to treat professional poisonings. To warn and to eliminate the remote consequences of harmful influence of the chemical agents on workers and their children and decides the following tasks. Establishment of parameters of toxic ability and danger of new chemical substances. Development of the hygienic standards in view of complex and combined action industrial poisons. Study of ability of substances used in manufacture to cause change of reactivity of an organism and to cause the remote effects cancerogenic, embryotoxic, teratogenic, mutagenic, heterogenic, premature aging, etc. Research toxicokinetics and toxicodynamics of an industrial poisons and development of ways of early diagnostics pathogenetic therapy and preventive maintenance professional intoxications. Study of dependence of biological action industrial poisons from chemical structure and physical chemical properties for development of express strains, methods of a toxicological estimation of new chemical substances, both realization of search and synthesis of less toxic and dangerous chemical compounds. As a whole, the briefly list tasks can be reduced to three. Hygienic norm setting of the contents of harmful substances in objects of industrial environment, hygienic examination of toxic substances, and hygienic standardization of raw material and products. It's necessary to take into account that the modern technological processes are frequently connected to risk complex. Influence of, the, of one chemical substance as simultaneous received in an organism by various ways. Combined action of several chemical substances and combining action, combination industrial harms with chemical and another physical, biological nature. The modern classifications industrial poisons are based on allocation of separate classes of substances on their chemical structure, modular condition, degree of toxic ability and danger, character and mechanism of influence on an organism and other attributes. By the chemical nature, industrial poisons divide on inorganic, organic and elementary organic. To the basic groups in organic industrial poisons concerned galogens, compounds of sulfur, nitrogen, phosphorus, arsenium, carbon, 
cyanide metals. Poisons of an organic nature are carbohydrates of aliphatic and aromatic lines and their derivative, aliphatic spirits, simple and complex ethers, and ketones. On a modular condition of substances in an air environment, all substances could be divided on gases, for example, chlorine, steams, concentrated alkalis and acids, and aerosols with a firm or liquid phase. By the route of exposure, they distinguish inhalatory, ingestive, and percutaneic poisons. In, pra the pra in the practical purpose, it's used the division of industrial poisons on their application in various branches of a national economy. The industrial solvents, varnishes and paints, polymers and plastic weights, pesticides, mineral fertilizers. On the mechanism of action industrial poisons for all flying industrial substances, it's used dividing on four large groups. First, asphictive substance. Simple asphictive mechanism of action replacement of oxygen from inhaled air, nitrogen, hydrogen, helium. Chemically active, cause hypoxic, hemic or tissual hypoxy. Charcoal gas, hydrocyanic acid. Second one, irritating substances. Oxides of sulfur, nitrogen, chlorine, hydrochlorine, hydrofluor, ammonia. Third, flying narcotic substances. Not having expressed after action. Hypoxide of nitrogen, ethers, aliphatic carbohydrates. Toxic for parenchyma. Gallogenic carbohydrates of an aliphatic line, toxic for hemopoiesis, aromatic carbohydrates, neurotoxic alcohol, sulfurous compounds of hypohydrates of a greasy line, toxic for blood and cardiovascular system, and fourth, photoplasmatic poisons, inorganic and metallorganic substances like mercury, lead, phosphorus, arsenic acid. Um, more modern classification allocates such classes of chemical compounds on character of influence on a human organism, rendering general toxic, irritating, sensibilitative, cancerogenic, mutagenic action influencing on reproductive function. On localization of display of harmful action of chemical substances, distinguish industrial poisons local, resorptive, and mixed local resorptive action. By the level of tox toxic ability, all chemical substances are divided on extremely toxic, very toxic, moderately toxic, low toxic. By the intensity of influence of an organ on an organism, on extremely dangerous, very dangerous, moderately dangerous, low dangerous. The routes of exposure of chemical substances are determined, first of all, by its modular condition. The inhalatory route of exposure is probable for gases, steams and aerosols. This route of exposure to industrial poisons in an organism is basic and most dangerous. The speed of absorption of the agent in blood depends on its modular condition, solubility in water and bioenvironments, partial pressure in an alveolar air, level pulmonar ventilation, speed of bloodstream in lungs, condition of tissues of lungs, presence of inflammatory processes, transudates, exudates. Character of chemical interaction of the agent with biosubstrates of respiratory systems. The mechanism of absorption through a skin is combined. Direct transepidemic penetration through epidermis, hair follicle and sebaceous glands through ducti of sweat gland is probable. The sides of a skin on a medial surface of ties and hands 
in an inguinal area, skin of genitalia. Breast and the abdomen are most sensitive in this respect. The most dangerous for percutanic penetration are the substances which soluble both in water and in fats. To industrial poisons capable to cause intoxication and contact to the unprotected skin and mucoses, they distinguish aromatic amino and nitro compounds, phosphororganic insecticides, chlorine carbohydrates, metal organic compounds. Electrolytes will not penetrate through a skin, they are lingered over as a rule in a horn or brilliant layer of epidermis. The exception is only for heavy metals, lead, tin, copper, arsenium, bismuth, mercury, antimony, and their salt, which are combining with greasy acids on a surface or inside a horn layer of epidermis and forming fat-soluble salts. Through a skin will penetrate not only liquid, but also flying gases and steams. Resorption of toxic substances from the digestive channel in uh, most cases has selective character, since its various departments have a special structure, chemical environment and enzyme system. Some poisons, all fat-soluble substances, phenols, some salts, are soaked up already in a cavity of a mouse. Thus, some toxic ability grows since they are not exposed to action of gastric juice and missing portal circulation, so they are not neutralized in the liver. In a stomach, all fat-soluble substances and not ionized molecules of organic compounds are absorbed by the simple diffusion. Through pores of a cellular membrane of gastric epithelium, the penetration of substances is possible also by filtration. Many toxic compounds are inactivated and contact to gastric juice. Um, on the other hand, many poisons, including the compounds of lead in gastric contents, are dissolved better than in water, therefore they are absorbed better. Character and speed of absorption are depend upon a degree of filling of a stomach, solubility of substance in gastric contents and each pH. The substances accepted on an empty stomach are most intensively soaked up. The biggest part of the toxic agents is absorbed in the thin intestine. Proteins of plasma, especially albumins, play the basic role in transportation of poisons by blood. The part of substances is transferred in erythrocytes by the formation of temporary compounds with hemoglobin. The certain role in the pathogenesis of poisonings uh, hemoreceptors of vessels of lesser bulbar innervation and greater spinal innervation circulation play. The basic transformations of toxic substances are oxidation, restoration, hydrolysis, synthesis, formation of peer compounds or, and conjugation. The biotransformation of poisons, as a rule, has their detoxication as results with formation of low toxic polar water soluble substances, easily excreting with urine. The trans biotransformation can have a character of a lethal synthesis, it's very characteristic for uh, phosphororganic and some chronic organic substances. The basic bodies participating in neutralizing of the toxic agents are a liver, the kidneys, lungs, walls of a stomach and intestine. Some soluble in lipoid substances like benzyl, ethanol, chloroform can be, can be allocated by mammoths with milk. Professional intoxication are divided on an acute and chronic. The acute poisonings arise owing to rather short term during one working change, but it's enough intensive concentration exceeds maximum admissible concentration and hundred and thousand time actions of the toxic agents. The reasons of acute professional intoxication can be emergencies, significant infringement of the technological rules, especially temperature mode, safety precautions, regulation, and industrial sanitary. 
In a line of cases, the acute poisoning develops immediately. Poisoning with petrol at clearing tanks and other cases after the certain latent period. Meet chronic professional intoxication much more often, which development is connected to cumulative action of the industrial poisons. The chronic professional poisonings grow out or action of small concentration of the poison at long exposition or as a result of several acute poisonings. For prevention of professional poisonings, the regulation and standardization of the industrial poisons will be carried out. The basic principles hygienic norm setting are the principles of stage norm setting and the principle of control on the established specifications, principle of thresholds and principle of the priority of the medical indications. The principle of threshold provides presence of a threshold of adverse influence of the chemical agent. The principle of the priority of the medical indications puts forward the requirements to an establishment of the hygienic specification, not from reasons of technical practicability or economic issues, but under the medical biological indications. Hygienic norm setting has huge meaning for professional selection and dispensarization, dispensarization of workers on harmful chemical manufacturers. The preliminary, primary and repeated medical surveys will be carried out by the experts in necessary volume with application of laboratory and instrumental methods of diagnostic in view of a structure working. The person responsible for realization of medical survey as a rule is workshop ordinator. In some cases, the responsibility for realization of medical survey is assigned to the doctors of other specialities, for example, neurologists at survey of the workers having contact to compounds of mercury. The doctors conducting physical examination should be well prepared both in the field of a professional pathology and on hygiene of work. For preparation of the doctors, the managers by branch of occupational hygiene says are answering. Before the beginning of survey, the doctors get acquainted with manufacture, working conditions, professional harms. The most effective way of preventive maintenance of professional poisonings is the replacement of the toxic agent by other compounds. Other change of the technological circuit consist in automation of the most dangerous sites of works. For decrease of pollution of objects of industrial environment, the equipment should be dramatized carefully. The sanitary technical measures of preventive maintenance include the rational device of ventilation with maintenance of workplaces by local air exhaust ventilation with application of absorbed and other during clearing structures. The dangerous works are made with application of individual protective means. Last are subdivided into individual means of protection of bodies of breeze, skin, organs of sight. The individual means of protection of bodies of breeze subdivide of filtering and isolating. To filtering the gas masks and helmets ensuring purification of an inhaled air from harmful impurity, inhaled the air of filters and sorbents in sponsoring respirators. Their use is not supposed if at air there there are unknown substances and the high contents of harmful substances and low contents of free oxygen. For protection of an eye at having poured of aggressive liquids, the closed glasses with direct ventilation or tight glasses, canned food are recommended. The means of protection of the skin include protect, protective pastes, ointments and creams and also special clothes and special food. For protection against action of fat-soluble organic substances are used hydrophilic ointment and paste on a basis of glycerin, 
gelatin. For protection against water-soluble compounds, the hydrophobic ointment and paste on a fatty basis. Classification of occupational microclimate. If you remember, we will study physical hazards. In the modern, our industry and agriculture has the element of occupational environment, about 20 of physical factors. There are occupational microclimate, ionizing radiation, electromagnetic waves, um, infrared, ultraviolet, visible light, laser, microwaves, ultrasound, noise, vibration, decreased and increased barometric pressure. Occupational microclimate is a complex of physical factors, convection and radiation temperature, air humidity and the velocity of air movement, determining the thermal status of workers' organism. So classification of occupational microclimate. Microclimate of hot workshops with radiation prevalence with convection prevalence. Second one, microclimate of cold workshops, man-made and microclimate of non-heating premises. Third, microclimate with expressed amplitude of factors. Fourth, microclimate made by the heating, ventilation and conditioning system. <clears throat> the acute action of overheating microclimate can cause heat stroke, heat edema, cramps. Prolonged action of these factors can be risky for the diseases as vegetative dystony, myocardial dystrophy, <clears throat> hyperacid gastritis, urethritis, urine stones. Chronic overcooling causes neuralgia, neuritis, radiculitis, myositis, tonsillitis, and other inflammatory processes. This factor takes part in the pathogenesis of bronchial asthma, paroxysmal tachycardia with allergic genesis. <clears throat> the prevention. They use some preventive direction in the prevention of diseases caused by occupational microclimate. Hygienic standardization to define an optimal and admissible parameters for working zone with taking in the account the heaviness of labor and the season. <clears throat> Technological measures, changing of technology, for example, if foundry to change combusting of solid and liquid fuel for inductive heating with high frequency current, automatization, distant operating, and so on. Architectural planning measures to project the for building and reconstruction rational architectural decisions. Optimal sizes of premises, localization and of heat producing sources, shielding. For sanitary technical measures, local conditioning of air, rational ventilation, air showering, heating. Circulating air is the most effective as well as the most complicated personal cooling system. By directing compressed air around the body from a supplied air system, both evaporative and convective cooling are improved. The greatest advantage occurs when circulating air is used with impermeable germans or double cotton overalls. Fifth, policy and plan, science-based regimen of the labor and the rest. For example, if density of infrared radiation is less than 700, the duration of non-stop working operating should be not more 15 minutes and percentage of work operations should be less than 70%. Every worker who works in extraordinary conditions that increase the risk of heat stress should be personally monitored. <coughs> Uh, 
Personal monitoring can be done by checking the heart rate, recovery heart rate, oral temperature or extent of body water loss. To check the heart rate, count the radial pulse for 30 seconds at the beginning of the rest period. If the heart rate exceeds 110 beats per minute, shorten the next work period by one-third and maintain the same rest period. Next one, types of prevention. Uh, individual protection. Reflective clothing, which can vary from aprons and jackets to suits that completely unclose the workers from neck to feet, can stop the skin from absorbing radiant heat. Medical benefits. Water regimen. To drink enough quantity of aerated water, sodium, chloride, tea, butter milk, skim milk, stewed dry fruits, juices. It's forbidden to use light alcohol beverages. Special diet enriched with protein. Dispensarization. The system of active medical surgery. Previous and periodic medical examination. Uh, next one, a physical hazard, electromagnetic waves. Infrared radiation is one of the factors of occupational microclimate. Microwave radiation is used for radar and in physiotherapy. This, these factors can cause deep tissue burns. Prolonged exposure to microwaves may be associated with impaired fertility. Some authors described intellectual and emotional disturbance associated with prolonged exposure to microwave radiation. The prevention, hygienic standardization, policy and plan, technological measures, sanitary technical measures like shielding for reflecting, individual protection, medical benefits, hygienic standardization. Laser are pulsed current electromagnetic waves, light waves in which all waves are in the same phase. They have several important scientific and industrial use. Lasers can cause irreparable retinal damage and severe burns. Pressure. Extreme variations of atmospheric pressure are tolerable if the oxygen supply is maintained. Under high pressure, more oxygen and nitrogen are dissolved in blood and body tissues. Under extremely high pressure, like scuba diving below 100 meters, so much nitrogen is dissolved that nitrogen narcosis results with disorientation and loss of consciousness. This is preventable by replacing nitrogen with helium. Some technological processes carried in water, bridge, dump, use the caissons. In these chambers, the air pressure is increased because for water replacing, they use compressed air. Sudden reduction of pressure, the compression, leads to release of dissolved gases from blood and tissues, which formation of bubbles. The band so-called because of the accurately painful effects of joints. There is a caisson disease forms. First, light, bands, atralgia, ostalgia, myalgia, neuralgia. Middle heavy, labyrinth damage, digestive tract and vision problems. Heavy, medulla, cerebral, coronary and respiratory signs. And fourth, lateral, embolia of lung vessels, heart stroke, insults. Prevention. Technological measures using helium oxygen mixture, hygienic standardization, policy and plan, decompression regimen, etc. Next one vibration. Two types general and local. Uh, it results usually among highly skilled specialists with high experience and prolonged exposure to the factor. In clinics, they classify, classify vibration disease into two nosological, nosological forms. Vibration disease caused with local and general vibration. The most dangerous for health one is local vibration with frequency 16 to 150 hertz. Pathogenesis of the disease results reflect erection of the vibration on the tissue receptors changed in function of CNS. 
<clears throat> uh, suprasegmental part of vegetative nervous system. Low frequency vibration cause infringement of muscular and bones tissues, peripheral nerves, vestibular somatic reactions. High frequency vibration changes vegetative regulation of the vessels. The prevention, hygienic standardization, sanitary technical measures, plan and policy. It's forbidden work with vibration for men under 18 and women. Rational regimen of work, complex teams, soft training, prevention of overcooling. Individual protection, vibration proof gloves, knee guards, special belts, breastplate, shoes with vibration proof sole or in sole. Noise. Sound waves are enabled for diffraction and interferential. In closed premises, sound can reverberate. In various workshops, the noise level can be variable. So you, we can divide noise into some groups by the spectrum, by the time characteristics, by the frequency. Very loud noise above 115, 120 can be damaged the cochlea and permanent impaired hearing. The damage to the cochlea depends on the duration and intensity of noise. It may lead to generalizing hearing loss or impaired hearing over specific sound references. Noise-induced hearing loss typically begins with loss at the 4000 Hz frequency. In an occupational setting, loud noise is also a hazard because it limits ability to hear warning signals. The noise is the power stress factor. Noise disease results as prolonged action of the noise and contain two main syndromes, cochlear neuritis and vegetative disorders including hypotonia. The prevention, hygienic standardization, uh, individual protection, like using uh, of antiphones, complex team, rational regimen of work and rest, medical benefits, dispensarization, sanitary education. And for you, it's enough, guys. Uh, take care and uh, everything will be okay. See you next time.